chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. War on corruption. It's Alex Jones. It's the time of the season. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Friday, June 27th, 2014. Paul Joseph Watson is going to be joining us in just a moment from the UK. But before we go to him, I want to tell you that uh, this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by our products at InfoWarsLife.com. Fluoride Shield is up for a 20% off special right now. If you go to InfoWars Life, you'll find an exclusive blend in the Fluoride Shield of key herbs and ingredients specifically infused with a formula to help support the elimination of toxic forms of fluoride and other dangerous compounds like mercury, chlorine, and bromine from within the body. For years, InfoWars has been fighting to remove forms of fluoride from the water supply. With a lot of support from around the world, there have been victories in many countries around the U.S., even the removal of sodium fluoride as far away as Germany, the Netherlands, and other nations. But while we may not be able to remove toxic fluorides from the global water supply just yet, we can actively make the decision to remove it from our bodies. You may even have a water filter at home to help remove toxic substances from the water, but you may not yet actively be working to remove these toxic substances from your body. So again, that's a 25% off special at InfoWarsLife.com. 25% off of Fluoride Shield. You know, when I was in Copenhagen, uh, uh, Paul, I told, uh, I was talking to a fellow there, and he said he's trying to wake up people to what's going on. And when he tells them that in the U.S. they're putting fluoride in the water, he said they don't believe him. They call him a conspiracy theorist. 
They don't put it in the water in uh, Copenhagen and uh, or Denmark, and they don't believe that anybody would do that to us here in the U.S. But yeah, even if you filter your water at home, you're still going to be getting it when you go out to eat or, you know, uh, in a lot of the products that you buy, you're still going to be getting fluoride. So that fluoride shield and that special is uh, something that's very valuable for people. Um, we have an article up here from Paul Joseph Watson that is a very positive article. And I want to play this uh, clip before we go to Paul and, and then get his uh, comments on that. Let's run with that clip. That's fine. I'm Staff Sergeant Guthrie from the Lance County Sheriff's Office. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Can you tell me what's going on? Uh, I was just taking pictures of F-16. The static display and stuff like that. I guess they, they don't like it very much. So. Uh, I understand. They, I, they need to go back and read the Constitution, I believe. Thank you. <laughs> Good deal. Not a problem. I'm not angry with you, not upset with you. All right. And you're not doing anything illegal as far as I'm concerned. Um, That's the sheriff talking. You know, they, they get a little excited. Like you're on a public access uh, area. Yeah, you can have a telephone in the lens. You can go anywhere in there. It doesn't matter. Right. You're not violating any law. You're not violating the Constitution. You're not violating the Constitution. Okay. God bless you, Sergeant. Hey, man, no problem. Thank you. Like I say, I do... Uh, How do you guys stand these bugs out here? <laughs> it's South Georgia. We get used to it. Goodness gracious. <laughs> 42 years worth of it. I get used to it. Now, this older fella coming down here, he ain't, he's not with you, is he? He's my friend, yes. Oh, is he? Okay. Uh-huh. Are y'all from around here? Uh, see, I'm not going to answer. Okay, that's much. good. So, Paul, set that up for us. Kind of give us a context of uh, what was going on immediately before that. Yeah, this is a video put out by the people from Photography is Not a Crime, which is obviously a website. We featured their work before that documents cases where people are harassed for taking footage on their cell phones and so forth in numerous different areas of the country. So they got reports that down in Georgia, outside Moody Air Force Base, people were being harassed by the feds and the police for taking images on their cell phones. So they went down there to conduct what they called a First Amendment test, uh, they arrived outside Moody Air Force Base on public property, obviously, began filming a nearby railroad track. And within three minutes, FPS, Federal Protective Service, which, of course, is a division of the Home Department of Homeland Security, officers came out, started harassing them, uh, started radioing for backup because they refused to provide any information. And so the individual in that clip, Jeff Gray, basically asked if he was being detained. The FPS had nothing to detain him on. He wasn't committing any crime. So they let him go immediately. But then they followed him in the car. They called for backup, which is when this sheriff's deputy arrived, Sergeant Guthrie, of the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. And basically, obviously, the feds expected him to harass Jeff Gray to an even greater extent. But as you heard in the clip, he basically says that the feds need to go back and read the Constitution because mm -hmm. it's not illegal to take pictures from public property. He says, I'm not angry at you. I'm not upset at you. You're not doing anything illegal. So, again, it's another one of these cases where and we've had them in the past with Sheriff Lenick at Albany Airport for the TSA protest, not really a protest, they were just handing out flyers, where he defended their First Amendment rights in the face of airport officials who were trying to harass them. So it's another case of a cop respecting constitutional rights, which is why kind of tongue in cheek called the article shock video, because we're used to, we're, you know, bathed in these police brutality videos from day to day. And it's very rare that we see something like this. Yeah. And, you know, I think this particular incident really highlights the fact that uh, these unconstitutional actions are really being driven by the feds. It's really being driven by Homeland Security. They're the ones who are really inciting local law enforcement, trying to get them to be more aggressive, to consider uh, that they're working in some kind of a, a military operation where we are, quote unquote, the civilians or maybe even the counterinsurgency and they're the good guys. And they're, they're fostering this martial law attitude and all points, and yet we still see that there are some good people in local law enforcement. It seems like, too, it typically is around sheriff's offices. I think that has something to do with the fact that the sheriffs are elected, the police chiefs are not. And I, th I think it has something to do with just that little bit of accountability to the public. I think that makes a difference. But there are local 
police officers, local law enforcement who are pushing back against this false narrative. And I thought it was interesting that the uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Guthrie there that was in the video said, yeah, I watch that stuff all the time on YouTube where people are having their First Amendment rights violated. Well, that's exactly the point because you know, it's refreshing to see this because it suggests that rather than inoculating everyone against being shocked by police brutality, the prevalence of these police abuse videos on the internet is actually serving to educate active police officers in understanding how important it is to uphold these constitutional rights. So the more cops that see these kind of videos, as you saw in the clip, Sergeant Guthrie says, yeah, I watch that stuff on YouTube all the time, the more they will realize that pressing the First Amendment wrong is wrong, that shooting people's dogs is wrong, and the less incidents we're going to see like this in the future. So, you know, I was quite cynical beforehand thinking that this overwhelming amount of police brutality that spreads on social media is merely acclimating people to accept it as normal. But in this case, we see that the sheriff's deputy has seen those videos He's upholding his oath to protect the Constitution, to protect people's rights. And so that has had a positive effect. So that's the really positive thing that I take out of this, is that we are actually educating the most important people in this issue, which is the police officers themselves, to respect constitutional rights, uh, specifically in this case, as they apply to the First Amendment. You know, I, as he's saying that he sees this stuff all the time, and you point out he, he, he watches these videos and his response is not to join in with the with the gang activity that a lot of these uh, officers are being encouraged to do by Homeland Security. But his response is to push back against that. I, I think as we see this escalating and being escalated by Homeland Security out of the federal government, we're going to see the wheat separating from the chaff. And clearly that staff sergeant is one of the wheat and not the chaff. Now, there's another article that's uh, up today on uh, Infowars.com that you wrote, Paul, about combat troops being sent back to Iraq. A veteran claims that his son was told his unit is being deployed in February of 2015. Now, this is coming right on the hills, uh, heels of uh, more revelations that uh, the Pentagon is going to send 500 troops to Iraq. You know, it was just uh, last week that he said he was going to send about 300. Now, that's nearly doubled. Now, we see this article that you put up where... Uh, this veteran is saying that his son's being told that he's going to be sent back to Iraq in February. Well, that's right. Of course, last week, Obama came out and said that no U.S. troops would be sent back to Iraq. The day after, <laughs> he announced that 300 special operations troops would be sent as advisors. Mm -hmm. Now, with this whole ISIS threat being propped up, being generated, the fear mongering being whipped up, of course, we know that the U.S. actually trained some of these ISIS terrorists back in 2012 at a secret base in Jordan. That's on the record. We've carried reports about that. So in supporting these jihadists in Syria, some of whom are aligned with ISIS, the Obama administration opened the door for them to then traverse into Iraq. Of course, they've now took control of major cities, major strategic outlets in Iraq. So we received this email, and since this article went up, I've received more. Uh, the first email said, we are being lied to about Iraq. This is from a U.S. Navy veteran talking about his son. My son is being trained right now and will be deployed to Iraq in February 2015. He's been told by the U.S. Army that his unit will be sent for combat. Then I received another email just before we went on air about 15 minutes ago. A family friend who is a Marine currently stationed at Camp Lejeune, I think that's how you pronounce it, yes. was told by his gunnery sergeant they will be deployed to Iraq. The, the Marine stated that after they finish training at Lejeune, they will be sent to 29 Palms for desert warfare training, then to Camp Pendleton. From there, they will be stationed on an amphibious assault ship until deployment to Qatar and ultimately Iraq. Hmm. So now we're getting more than just the initial email from these veterans whose sons are being told that their combat units will be sent to Iraq. The timing, of course, is somewhat in the future. That's, that probably tells you that they're preparing for a, a much greater operation to try and take back those key Iraqi cities from the very insurgents that the Obama administration helped in the first place by supporting these jihadists in Syria. Yeah, and of course, Yahoo News is reporting today that Obama is seeking $500 million, that's half a billion dollars from Congress to help, quote unquote, moderate Syrian rebels. We know that all last year they were trying to do everything they could to start a war in Syria. And we were told years ago, 
by Wesley Clark that they had a plan. They were going to go from this, uh, this state in the Middle East to that one, to that one, to that one. And it was just like he said, the same sequence. And yet, as we push, the good news is, is that as we push back on their false flag attacks to try to get a war started in Syria, saying,